The regulators require certain elements, certain features, certain content to be included on a public company's web page that's devoted to investor relations. What is that bare minimum? Today on Zippy Point. I'm Brock Romnack, and I'm a big fan of you. So you may be surprised to learn that the SEC doesn't have much in the way of guidance about what the bare minimum is for IR web pages. What it does have is through a patchwork of various rules adopted over a long period of time, none of which were adopted in tandem or really build off each other. So when I say patchwork, it really is a patchwork completely random. I don't understand why that's the case, given that studies show that investors do look to corporate websites for information about investing in a particular company, and the SEC is in the disclosure business. But I'll leave my rant to a separate vid guide I've made about my wish list for things that I wish the SEC would tackle, a link to which is below and tackles this topic. To a limited extent, the New York Stock Exchange, the NYSE, has helped to fill in a few of the gaps that the SEC's patchwork regulatory landscape has left open. The NASDAQ requires very little of its listed companies here. So it's still quite a mess. There is scant standardization. The standardization that exists is more of a function that companies outsource their IR web pages to a handful of third-party providers in this area, not all of whom are necessarily motivated to make the experience for investors as easy as it can be. But I should say that things definitely have improved quite a bit over the past two decades on IR web pages, so that's a plus for sure. So let's run down this patchwork of 13 rules and regulations from the SEC in this area. In a bunch of these, the SEC gives the company the option to make required documents or disclosures available through its corporate website or through another method, through the SEC filing process. For example, making a certain disclosure in the proxy rather than posting it as a standalone thing on a corporate website. And in many cases, companies actually choose to make the disclosure in the proxy or another SEC filing rather than post that information on its corporate website separately. And of course, many companies go beyond the minimum of what's required and post much more information. They're tuned to what investors want. See my separate vid guide about what an IR web page should optimally look like, what are hot tips, a link to which is beneath this video. So let's talk about these 13 SEC rules and regs. One is section 16 reports. They must be posted, which can be made by a link to the SEC's Edgar database by the end of the business day after each form is filed. Now, many of these SEC rules have an archival period. This one does, 12 months. Two, proxy materials, proxy statements, proxy cards, and annual reports must be posted on a corporate website for e-proxy, notice and access purposes. Three, the 34 Act reports. You must disclose in your Form 10-K whether you're posting your 10-Ks and 10-Qs and your 8-Ks on your corporate website, and if not, why not? And then you would provide paper copies free of charge. Four, Reg FD, so the SEC's 2008 interpretive guidance about the use of corporate websites is important to look at here and how Reg FD fits into all this. I have a separate vid guide about this intersection of Reg FD and, and IR web pages, a link to which is beneath this video. And actually I have separate vid guides really about every single one of these 13 items on this list. Other than conflict min minerals, I my goal in life is never to make a vid guide about conflict minerals. Five, Reg G, public disclosure of non-GAAP financial measures must be accompanied by Reg G compliant information, which can be concurrently posted on the corporate website, provided that the, the URL is made public in the same presentation in which the non-GAAP financial measure is made. And the SEC here recommends a 12-month archival period. Six, Form 8K, particularly items 2.02 .02 and 5.05, .05, permit website posting of information in certain circumstances. Seven, conflict minerals. Form SD requires certain website disclosures. You must post your conflict minerals report, if you have one, on your corporate website. Eight, this is a weird one. If you withdraw a class of stock from a stock exchange, Rule 12D, 2.2 requires posting of a notice of intentional to withdraw that securities from the exchange. Nine, the rest of these are governance disclosures in which you make disclosure in your proxy or on your corporate website. So this one's about whether current copies of the key board committee charters are available on the corporate website. Number 10, uh, proxy disclosure where the company has a Sarbanes-Oxley compliant code of ethics. And among other options, the code may be posted on the corporate website along with disclosure and in the annual report about what the URL is and 
if you have a code waiver that can be disclosed via corporate website or in the corns or, or you know on a form 8k number 11 website or proxy disclosure of the company's process for shareholder communications to directors number 12 website or proxy statement disclosure of the director independent standards used by the company if they're other than those prescribed by your stock exchange standards or the sec's rules number 13 website or proxy disclosure about the company's policy for directors attending the annual shareholders meeting and the number of directors who attended last year's meeting so let's talk about the new york stock exchange where companies listed on the nyc they have you have eight or nine website posts and requirements to consider the first one's regarding the 10k and here the nasdaq is involved as well they both require annual reports that have audited financials to be post you know the nyc requires it to be posted on it on a company's website whereas nasdaq offers website posting as one of the few options and this is only time that nasdaq gets involved with telling its listed companies what they might do with the ir webpage otherwise they are silent uh, number two key committee charters the nyc requires its listed companies to post their charters for their audit compensation and nominating corp gov committees on a corporate website three corporate governance guidelines the nyc's standards require their listed companies to make their corporate governance guidelines available through the corporate website code of ethics the nyc requires posting on the corporate website of the prescribed code of business conduct and ethics and disclosure of website availability in the proxy and same thing with code waivers with the sec's rules you need an ak filing the nasdaq simply requires its prescribed code of conduct to be publicly available and of course, most NASDAQ companies, I mean, for them, they interpret that as posting on their corporate website. Audit committee overboarding, the NYSE rules require a website or proxy disclosure if the board has determined that an audit committee member's simultaneous service on three public company audit committees doesn't impair that person's ability to effectively serve on this company's audit committee. Communication with directors, NYSE's rules require a website or proxy disclosure for a method for all interested parties to communicate directly with the presiding director or with the non-management or independent directors as a group. Presiding director for executive sessions, the NYC rules require website or proxy disclosure of a director chosen to preside at an executive session. Or if the presiding director rotates, then you have to disclose that process. And then here's an obscure one, <laughs> charity contributions where the director is an executive officer of that, of that tax exempt organization if it goes over a certain dollar threshold of contributions. I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you think. Mm -hmm.